Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica. Thank you so much for joining us in our Tinkercad circuits tutorial. So you should go over to tinkercad.com. If this is your first time joining us, check out one of these other videos that we have made for you guys to help you guys learn about the Tinkercad. It'll get you used to what you're using and teach you how to use a breadboard and get you some entry level into the 555 timer. Because today we are making a piano using that 555 timer. It's gonna be pretty amazing, but you're gonna want to probably not start from scratch. And we've got lots of other videos in our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. And also support us at patreon.com slash Research. All right, so we are going to make a 555 timer piano. This is going to be so much fun. The first thing you were gonna to wanna to do is a breadboard. Now, normally we've used this little small breadboard. This time, we're going to use a bigger breadboard. So if we, in search, we look for a breadboard, they have a couple different sizes. We want the normal size breadboard. We can pull that on out over here. This just gives us extra space for our thing. Let's power this up with a nine volt battery. And I'm going to rotate it right here and we will go from our positive into our positive and our negative into our negative up here. I'm going to color this one red like usual, going hot and this one black as per usual. I'm also going to connect around the back side of this so that we can have power on the top and the bottom which can sometimes be really helpful, especially when it comes to organizing our circuit and making it look nice and pretty. All right, so let's get started. Let's bring out that 555 timer to start off, and we will put that right over here. Again, it bridges this gap. Make sure you don't put the 555 up here with all of the holes because that will connect your legs straight across that 555. You need this gap just like we needed it in our small breadboard projects. We also are going to need some piano buttons. So we can look for some buttons up in our search. And we are gonna use these little push buttons as our piano buttons. So we can pull out a few of these and you can place them basically every couple of holes. Um, we'll skip a hole between each one of these, just like that. You do need two holes between this piece and the 555. But I think we only need one hole between the other ones. And depending on how many keys you would like in your piano, you can add as many of these as you would like. And we'll show you how to wire each of them up. So we're gonna wire these bottom terminal 1As all together for each of them. So what you'll do is you'll click here and you'll go from the first pin to the first pin. Let's not make this red. Let's make it pink. I'm feeling a little pink today. And then we'll just go down one, connect it to the first pin there, and now we can go up one. And so we're gonna connect all of these first pins right like that. Now if you decided you wanted more buttons, you'll just keep on going for all of those buttons. All right. So let's take a look at the things that we need for our 555. Here is our ground, so we should wire that right into ground right away. Let's color that one black right there. And the other side is our power that we can color or connect right into power and color red. We are gonna connect our ground and our trigger with a capacitor. So you can either search for the capacitor or if you're in the basic, it should come right up. What's great is this is the one we need. You can pull it and that is our ground and our trigger. So that's, we just plop it right in there. We are gonna want a capacitance of 100 nanofarads, just like it comes out for mine, just in case that yours is a little different. We are also going to want to be able to play some music. So let's find our buzzer. We use these little piezo buzzers right here. And so this is where our music will come out at. So you can place that in right there. We are going to want to connect the negative into the ground, just like that. And we'll color that black because that one is going straight into ground. And the positive side of this is gonna go through a resistor and into our output from the 555. So we need to grab a resistor. Just click on this little guy, it went away. 
Let's grab a resistor. I'm gonna put it sideways like this. And we need that resistor to be a specific size. It's gonna be a hundred kilo ohms. So not one kilo ohm, but a hundred kilo ohms. And we are gonna connect this into our output. Sort of connect it down here and it doesn't quite reach. So we'll move that over there. We don't want that one to be black. Let's just color that turquoise. So that's going into our output. So now we have some output going into this buzzer and the output's what's gonna give our buzzer the voltage and the different voltages that it sort of buzzes at is gonna give us the different tones that we hear. Like usual, we're gonna connect our trigger to our threshold over here. So we are going to see if we can make this look nice out actually connecting into those dots. Oops. We'll hit Control Z since we connected into the dots. You can just sort of go straight over, but I like to try to make our wires look a little nicer. And that just helps probably you guys to see where we're going as well. All right, and we are going into the threshold. So let's come up a little bit and then we'll go into the threshold. You'll notice that once I lay the wire, it actually lets me move it around quite easily. So I can make this even look even better by sort of going like that, which is kind of nice. Maybe I'll bring this one down here. And that lets me really easily see those two. I think I'm gonna color that one maybe an orange. So that's connecting my threshold and my trigger together. I'm going to connect my discharge into my hot area. So I'm gonna connect it up here and I want a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor right there. It's very specific, I know. These guys should both be connected into the same hole. If you're worried about it, you can always connect this one into a different hole. Make sure you still color it red though. All right, so I've got, that's my discharge. I'm also going to now take a whole bunch of resistors and I'm going to rotate it. And I'm gonna connect this from my discharge into the first terminal 2B of my little push button. All right, now this one I'm gonna put at 4.7 kilo ohms. Now these different resistances are going to change sort of the tune of your piano. Um, our pianos won't actually be in tune, but it will change the pitches that we hear. All right, and I'm gonna leave these guys all at one kilo ohm. And I'm gonna do something very similar to what we just did, and that's I'm gonna connect these back pieces all together. And you can see now, if I hit copy paste, this sort of works perfectly in the spacing, because we left this one hole here. It works perfectly in that spacing. And so I can start connecting all of these oops, different guys together. And it should be from, again, this terminal 2B to terminal 2B is what we are connecting. And again, if you have more buttons out here, that's totally fine. You'll just keep going with this thing just like we had, you had more wires down here. So now I'm going to connect my reset into our hot voltage, our high voltage. And the last thing we need to do is we need to actually connect these buttons into my 555 timer. I'm actually gonna move my little capacitor up now that we know it's in the right spot. And then I can connect this button into our trigger. And we are gonna color that one pink to stay with the same color scheme. Now when we hit start simulation and we press our buttons, we can hear different tones. And it'll keep getting deeper as you go. And you can play a little song and you can have a lot of fun with this. And then as an extra trick, you can see if you can figure out what do each of these resistors have to be to actually make a piano in tune. And that's sort of a fun little problem to solve. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Pretty soon we are gonna be at the time to start with Arduinos and start programming Arduinos in Tinkercad. It's pretty amazing. You can even test your code and test your circuit at the same time. We hope you're having a ton of fun with this tutorial and we'll see you soon. Bye friends.